Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Um, today we're going to fix a bug in the Hermes programming language. Um, so in front of me here on GitHub I have the issue that I just created three minutes ago. Um, <clears throat> there's a problem where you're where when you're declaring a variable inside of a loop like this it's going to be uh, you're gonna get a redefine error uh, on the second iteration of the loop. So that's not very good, right? So here I have this example here and let's run that. So if I run this uh, definition in loop, you can see here we're getting the variable Y is already defined. So we're going to fix this and uh, I haven't really thought about how to fix that yet. Um, maybe to just scrap the whole um, or make a copy of this scope here every time we iterate through it because right now we're just re reusing the same old scope so I think one way you would like to do is actually um, at the end of the loop make sure all the variables that were defined in that loop gets thrown away. Yeah, that's probably the right solution. And in this case, it would have been nice with some kind of garbage collector. I have actually created an issue for that. But we don't have a garbage collector at the moment. Okay. So let's look at what we can do with this. Also, if you have suggestions for any better webcam software, please please tell me in the comments. Oh, I got something in my eyes. Because uh, this, I'm using Cheese right now, and I don't I don't really like it too much because this has all of this user interface that gets in the way. Anyway, so how do we fix this? I would think that if we go into the uh, visit while. Um, I think after we have done this, we want to undefine all the variables that were declared in that scope, probably. So the while body has its own scope, I think. If we go into the parser and we go to parse, parse while, it should have its own scope. So while body... Uh, while scope is equal to so it's not getting a new scope no of course of course of course it's not going to get a new scope hmm. so this is interesting how do we capture variables that has been defined within the while body hmm. that's a good question actually it's probably a pretty complicated thing to fix. Because if you had a garbage collector, you would probably, after here, you want to call the garbage collector sweep method to uh, get rid of all everything that has been defined within there. But we don't really know what has been defined in there, I guess. Um, one thing you could do is to get all the uh, variables that were defined before we visited the wild body and uh, compare them to everything that was uh, defined afterwards and remove all of the new ones. That's probably what you would have to do, actually. So, uh, let's make an ugly hack for this now, just to see if we can fix it. So I'm thinking, let's do this dynamic list t old definitions is equal to init dynamic list size of uh, 
size of PST T pointer. Okay. And then what we want to do is for an i is equal to zero if i is less than um, get scope. Actually, let's just capture the scope here. So uh, scope Hermes scope t scope is equal to get scope. Get scope node, uh, and then we want to do scope obviously you would want to do this for both variable definitions and function definitions any kind of definitions uh, obviously anyway ESTT var def is equal to scope variable definitions ims i dynamic list append old def list var def oh so what we're doing here is that before we are visiting this one, we're saving all the old definitions. Let's just see if this compiles. No, it doesn't. Mm. What am I missing? Get scope, get scope, get scope, get scope, get scope. Oh, we need to pass in the runtime. So it compiles, and then we need to do the same thing again, but for the new variables, and we're going to compare them. So we're going to do this. I wonder if my dynamic list function has a function to check if a uh, Uh, an item exists within it. I don't think I have that. No. So let's just do that manually for now. So we're going to do for n j is equal to zero if j is less than old def list size j plus plus is tt uh, old def is equal to old def list uh, items. And then we want to do a uh, uh, wait, let me think here. Actually, we want to make it the opposite. We want to go through the uh, through the new definitions in within here. Uh, that's what we want to do. So we want to do a <clears throat> So here's the new the new definition. Here's the new definition. If and we want to check if if new def
Sorry, I, I'm thinking wrong here. Uh, my brain isn't really working correctly at the moment. We want this paper, okay? And then we want to do... I still want to name it new def though. I still want to name it new def. And then we want to do if if not exists. Then we want to remove it from the list. We want to completely remove that definition. So one way to do that is to go into the. Uh, I think the list has a remove method actually. Yeah, it does have a remove method. And it has a you can pass in a free method to it as well, and it's gonna call. It should be calling the free function on it. Yeah, it's called the free function. So what you can do is <clears throat> dynamic list remove um, scope variable definitions. Put it on a new let's make this on multiple lines so that we can see it better um new def is t free or free it if you want to free it i think we could just pass in ast free or can we do that void free method void item no we can't just do that we have to do we have to do static void um is t free is t t um then we pass that in and um once we're done with all of this, we want to do go ahead and free the old definition list because we're done with it. I think that could possibly work. Static declaration allows no static declaration. Multiple definition of AST free. Uh, first find it, Hermes runtime. First to find here. ASTC. Oh, it, we already have one of those. So the ASTC already has. Okay, so we can just use that. Uh, we can just use that. It's perfectly adequate. It's perfectly adequate. So if we run our code again. Now it doesn't. Now it doesn't give us the error. It doesn't give us the error anymore because we have sweeped the whole uh, scope from new variable definitions after we have um, after we have uh, visited the while loop body. Now there are other problems here. I think. Um, for example, what if we had a, a function that defined a variable? If we had a function that defined a variable, this is void def var. ABC is equal to one. What if we had a function that defined the variable um, within here? I don't think that variable is going to get uh, sweeped afterwards. No, it's going to cause a problem. So, <clears throat> I 
you would have to recursively visit the nodes within the body and do this kind of uh, uh, sweep thing. So maybe I should put this in a separate function. Because you would have to do that for all the for all the nodes within the body. Um, so what you would have to do is actually Let's just make a little playful function here, just for fun. So let's just call this static void sweep or something. And we are going to sweep a node. Okay. Um, to sweep a node. So what you can do is put this here and then you want to put this here. Okay. Then you want to have a. I'm going to put this block in that function as well. And we will try to call this function recursively on all nodes, basically. <clears throat> so. Here's the problem. We need to have this one executed within here. How would we do that? How would we do that? I guess we would have like a switch here. Switch node type case C while. If it's a while type, then we would just use we do this. And if it's a uh, what if it's a function call? If it's a function call, this while, this while, node while, runtime wizard, node while, body. Um, Then you would just put this sweep here. Sweep. No. And then we would have to call this function on all the child nodes within the while loop, I guess. So actually, let's just do this. Let's just for now make this only work for 
um, Y loops at the moment. Okay. And then what you would do is that you would do a uh, you would do like that, and then you would do a four and five is equal to zero and five is in mode. See, I have forgotten the what the structure looks like. So compound. So the compound value is actually the um, the thing we're looking for. Compound value. Then you would do a sweep on the child. Okay. The problem is that what if we encounter a. So eventually we're going to encounter a function. A function. Uh, When this one is being executed, it's going to it's going to uh, <coughs> visit a uh, function call, which will go ahead and visit a function definition body. Hmm, maybe this recursive strategy is wrong. I don't know. <coughs> child why are we doing that why would we sweep the child why would we sweep the child one time visit child one time visit child no this is this is actually wrong we're not interested in doing that we're not interested in doing that we're not interested in doing that no, no, no. Sorry, guys. This is uh, this is very much wrong. Because what we want to do is to have this type of sweeping in whatever this is visiting later. And eventually it's going to visit a function called body, right? So what you would do is that you would put this in the uh, visit uh, compound. Visit compound. Here's actually where you want to put it. This is where you want to put it. And it's going to... And it's going to be working for the while loop as well. So <clears throat> let's remove that. Let's remove this. Because this uh, runtime visit function call up here is going to vis vis go ahead and visit the compound. And that function will also be called when you're visiting the function called body. So this will apply for all of them, basically. Um,
there we go. Now we need to have this being called here and here as well. But for now, let's just try this. It doesn't even compile. So we need to catch the scope. We need to catch the scope. And I forgot the passing the runtime again. Unused scope. How is it unused? We're using it here. Oh, it's at another place, isn't it? One five four four. You see, now it works without a problem. So we don't need this here anymore because we're doing that at the compound level, which means that it's also going to sweep the variables um, within function calls. So it's going to go and uh, sweep this one afterwards, and it's going to go into this, and then it's going to call this, and when that once that has been called, it's going to sweep that as well, because it's kind of recursive now, okay? Because it's doing this for every compound. And this is a com this everything in here is a compound and everything in here is a compound. Okay, so that's that's why this is working basically. Um, but I think I need to wrap this part here in a separate function. This what we're doing here is basically kind of garbage collecting, basically. We're collecting garbage. So this will have to take in the uh, uh, dynamic list t old def list, and it's going to take in a Hermes scope t scope. And that's basically it. Same behavior. Now, it will not work right now if you go in here and let's say we uh, let's say we return return ABC. Then it's not going to be garbage collected. No, it's not going to be garbage collected. So what you need to do. We didn't get an error there. We should have got an error. Anyway. <clears throat> so now we can just use this function here as well. Um, here's a problem though. If we're returning something, we don't want to... Uh, maybe collecting the garbage then is not really what you want to do. We'll, we'll try it out. Um, work but what if we uh, what if we do this int number is equal to and we print the number it's very possible that it's being sweeped yeah number is already defined hmm, that's pretty strange print number hmm Why am I not able to do that? What if we just print this? Print. 
Okay, so anyway, it's not getting sweeped. But why was I not able to do this? Should have sweeped that as well. Should have sweeped that as well. Anyway, we should have this here as well. No, it's already fine. Why is it not sweeping it? We're going through the old definitions. Is it because we need to? Uh... No, I have no idea. No, I have no idea. We're going through the old definition list. We're going through the old definition list. Or actually, we're going through the current definition list then we're going through the old definition list and if if it exists if it not exists in the old definition list we remove it from the scope for able definitions through the old definition so that's pretty strange that's really strange what if i do like that so it only works for the first one is that true is that true it only works for the first one Interesting. So it only works for the first one. So if if not exist in the old def list, old def list. That's kind of strange. that exists variable anyway but why is it behaving like this that's really strange scope definition size Why is less than 
Is it because, no, that can't be true. We shouldn't do that for every, we should do it at the end of the compound loop, which we are doing. What if there's something wrong with this thing? No, nah. I highly doubt that. Um, so let's just print. Let's print I here. Getting through zero and one. If this is zero, this is one. Okay, so what if we print it here? We're only getting one. Well, that doesn't make sense. Because why is the one that is not getting removed? So, wait, we're just checking if the old definition is not equal to the new def. Can it already be defined? It's strange. If access. Redefine. Find defined. What if we just always do it? Ah, no, that's. So if the uh, if the new definition does not exist within the old definitions, we want to remove it. Yeah, that makes sense. But it's not working. Print its name. Uh -huh. So it's removing the num, okay, and then it's not removing the other one.
XX, whole name XX. We're getting them both. That has the same behavior. Old def. Why does it have the same behavior? We know we're iterating over it. Old, new, old, new. What? That doesn't make sense. Old, x, new, x, old, x, new, no. Makes sense.
old X. Oh, I think I know what's going on. The loop is breaking because the X gets undefined. We're sweeping away the X. Is that what's going on? I actually think that might be what's going on. That is very much possible. It's very much possible. But then, nah, then we shouldn't be able to, nah, then it would have been swept away at this stage as well. seeing the Y in the new one, the new one. I saw that here. Oh, why is this happening? It's not even iterating through that new variable, is it? Or what is going on here? I'm not seeing the ASDF variable. Hmm, interesting.
Could it be that I have to fetch this scope again? No. Couldn't be like that. No. I shouldn't have any effect. But for some reason, it hasn't been defined. Let's just, let's just, um, let's loop through them all. Before we do this, we do a print now. Let's just print all the names of them and see what happens. Uh, so we have the ASDF, okay? We have it. And uh, obviously it should be existing within this function as well. Shouldn't really be any difference going on there. Yeah, we still have it. Okay. So we're going through the. Oh, wait. Because the old definition size is actually smaller than the new one. Um, so what's going to happen here is... This will never print it, of course. This will never print it. This one, however, should print it. It should print it. No, it's not printing it. That's really, really strange. That's. Okay, we are printing it. Now we're not printing it. So something goes wrong here. Now we are printing it. So which one is causing the problem here? Oh, we are actually removing variables while we are looping. That's probably why. That seems very much right, yes. So, uh, oh God, one ugly hack, I guess, could be to To mark it as garbage I guess and then remove it afterwards so let's do that 
that took a while to figure out. Uh, so now what you can do is in the runtime here, uh, we still want to do that, but it not exists. We're going to mark it as garbage. And then we can loop through it and uh, remove it, <laughs> basically. Uh, How about that? We we might actually have to put it in a temporary list, so this might actually not work. I think we have to um, put it in a temporary list, unfortunately. How about that? There we go. That solved the problem. <laughs> Finally. Uh, now I actually don't need that garbage flag. Actually, I do need it because I'm checking for it. No, I don't need it because we're only looping through the uh, garbage list. So everything in here is going to be garbage. Why are we crashing? Oh. There we go. Perfect. We solved the problem. 
Now we should probably put this function somewhere else. For now, let's just put it on top of the file. Um, in the future, I'm going to write a more sophisticated garbage collector. Um, but for now, um, we'll just have it in the same file here. Cool. And one thing I forgot to do was to free the garbage list. So I need to do, actually here we need to do items and old def list. Uh, if And then we're going to do the same thing for the garbage list. Let's run the test. Tests are all passing. Cool. Uh, let's see if, um, if this still works. Uh, in ABC is equal to def bar print ABC. No. There's probably a scoping problem here with these variables crashing. Yeah, but that's another bug, I guess. Uh, that's another bug. And uh, it's kind of embarrassing, actually. Why would that get the same scope, though? What if I did? No, that works. It's only within the wide loop that it breaks. So. Anyway, we sold that bug. That was kind of difficult. Let's create a branch for this. Oh. and this will close this issue it has the number 73 <clears throat> okay um, let's make a pull request see here if it builds but that was kind of interesting that was very interesting but this also uh, created another, another bug that didn't exist before this variable can't have the same name as the one within this 
call. So that's pretty, pretty bad. Well, I'm gonna file. Uh, I'm gonna create another task for that. That bug did certainly not exist before. Um, but uh, yeah, okay. Let's see if it built. Yeah, it built. Cool. I should have a test for that. If I if I would have had a test for that, then I would have noticed that this problem occurred. So I'm probably gonna add a test for that as well. And let's delete that branch for now. And I'm going to do a uh, git checkout master git pull. Oh, git reset for git pull. All right. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Um, this became a very long video. It was a bit more complicated than I thought. And also, it has created another bug that I, I'm going to have to look into. Mm. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you're not already a subscriber, hit the subscribe button. And if you don't want to miss any of my uploads, hit the bell button. So I hope you will have a wonderful day.